Hello everyone. So today we're going to construct a frequency distribution table and our data set will be the scores of 40 students in a 50 item math exam. So these are their scores. So the first step in constructing a frequency distribution table is to determine the approximate number of class intervals. So we can have an arbitrary choice. Maybe we can choose five or 10 class intervals. But today, we're going to use a formula, namely Sturgis formula. So it is given by k is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log of n. n here is the number of observations in our data set. So here, n is 40. So, for our data set, k is equal to 1 plus 3.322 log of 40. So, this is 6.32. So, we have approximately 6 class intervals. So our next step is to determine the range. So the range is computed using this formula. So our highest value is 48 and our lowest value is 13. So our range is 35. And then after getting the range, we can now determine the class size. So the class size is just the value of the range divided the, by the number of class intervals. So it's equal to Thirty five divided by six. So C is equal to five point eighty three. But we have to round this off to a whole number since our data set involves whole numbers. So this is six. So our class size is six. Now we are going to construct our frequency distribution table. So we have our intervals. So the intervals will have lower class limits and upper class limits. And if we're going to arrange our distribution in increasing order. We have to start with the lowest value. So our lowest class limit is 13. Now to find the other lower class limits, we're going to add the class size to the previous lower class limit. So 13 plus 6 is 19. 19 plus 6 is 25, plus 6 is 31, plus 6 is 37, plus 6 is 43. So we only have 6 class intervals. We only have 6 class intervals. So to find the upper class limits, we just subtract one from the lower class limit, the next lower class limit. So 19 minus one is 18. And then to find the other upper class limits, we just add the class size six 
So, 18 plus 6 is 24, which is 25 minus 1. And then, 24 plus 6 is 30. And then, 36. And then, 42. And then, 48. Now, look at the last upper class limit. So, is the highest value in the data set found in the last class interval? If yes, then there's no need to add another class interval. So, for example, if we only got 47 here, then we have to add another class interval. So, we have to add 6. 43 plus 6. And then the upper class limit. But since we all we already have the highest value in the last interval, so there's no need for that. And then we're going to count the number of observations in each interval. So for the first interval, we can make a tally. Okay, we can count, but since our observations are already in increasing order, it's easier for us to count. So from 13 to 18, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 observations. From 19 to 24, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 observations. From 25 to 30, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 observations. From 31 to 36, there are 1, 2, 3, 4 observations. From 37 to 42, there are 3 observations. And last, from 43 to 48, there are, again, 3 observations. Then we have to add the frequencies. It should have a total of 40. So 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 4 plus 3 plus 3 is 40. So we have accounted for all the observations in our data set. So this is our basic frequency distribution table.